today is going to be probably more of a shorter stream, um, simply because I need to cook dinner and I'm starving. And also, my lives have just been getting longer and longer, and I think I need to just try to keep them to like a little bit shorter. So, anyway, today I'm going to be talking about. Let me know if you can hear me. All right. Actually, let me see if I can get the chat going here. Okay. Turn this down. All right. Hi. <laughs> okay. So, do you do you pronounce your name Odalith? Odalith. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> I wasn't really sure. Um, so today I'm going to be uh, talking about fitting these shorts, and I decided to kind of go about, RM, hello, hello, um, I decided to go about, hi, Lyric, hello from Montana, again, hello from Florida, <laughs> again, <laughs> um, I decided to go about fitting these, oh, you've turned on your notifications this time, yay, glad to see you, <laughs> see you, um, so, I have sewn a few pairs of shorts and pants at this point, and none of them have fit really great. <laughs> I've had varying degrees of success, um, mostly not so great. I mean, I still wear a lot of the stuff I've made a lot, but I just am looking to get a really good fit. So, you know, upon Googling pants fitting, it's... It's just there's so much out there and and there's so many different like variables you know with the, the crotch length and the depth and um you know then you've got where everything else like your hips and anyway th there's a lot basically uh so I was like all right I'm gonna just go back to kind of I guess the drawing board where I'm just gonna try to figure this out like as logically as I can using my own method <laughs> so I'm not using a tutorial to fit these I am kind of just doing what I think seems logical so that being said and no one to fit your backside <laughs> rats <laughs> I mean I could probably find someone to do it but I don't know if he would really want to do it <laughs> um so I have this flexible ruler and I decided today that I was going to uh, <laughs> fit it to myself um, and I did that and it's not long enough to go all the way from the front so I did it from the waist in the front to you know wherever it ended and then I recorded that. And then I did the same thing from the waist in the back until, you know, as far as it would go. And then I recorded that. Um, so together it works. And actually I double checked um, the shape or the length by uh, comparing that length, that measurement to the one that I took with my um, flexible measuring tape. Um, and they were just about the same, <laughs> mind blowing. You know, it's, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around trying to like, just adjust based on the measurements. Like I felt like I needed the shape because the shape of your body is important. Um, and so there's this lady on Instagram, Ithaca Maven, actually her name is Ruth. Um, and she has like a really detailed pants fitting um, highlight saved to her Instagram. And she didn't actually sew any in this series of posts, but she did a lot of research and just thinking about, you know, how pants patterns are designed and drafted and like the ease and the um, the style and shorts are different from trousers. Um, usually 
trousers have a lot more uh, wearing ease and design ease than shorts. So I'm really going for fitted shorts for this project. Um, pretty fitted. So we'll see how that goes. And if, if this works out, then I think hopefully I can kind of adjust this pattern to the more drapey, loose trouser um, patterns. <laughs> um, is the quality OK for the stream? Can you hear me OK and the video is all right? I think I remembered to turn off my Wi-Fi on my phone. Just let me know. So the other thing I did, I told you I used the flexible ruler to, you know, measure myself, <laughs> my undercarriage, so I like to call it. Um, but I also, okay, thank you. I also, <laughs> I wanted to take into account like my butt cheeks. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, um, and also, I guess, like, the, the wedgie measurement, for lack of a better word, um, because, you know, depending on how your, your flesh is distributed, <laughs> you might have to take into account more, like, roundness and, you know, how much you want the seam to actually go up, up in there, <laughs> um, and I would prefer not to have a wedgie, um, but I figured that if I could measure like where the butt cheek difference was with the wedgie measurement, that might help me kind of determine like what shape it needs to be in the end. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I mean, maybe that was useless, but I feel like it actually was helpful. <laughs> I love this. You know, nobody knew that they were going to get an anatomical uh, lecture today. <laughs> um, yeah, so let me show you my um, measurement and my tracing. It's pretty interesting to see my torso, body, crotch, whatever you want to call it, like drawn out flat. And actually, I did take a little picture a picture of myself yesterday in the mirror as kind of straight on as I could get it um, just to kind of trace like a little silhouette because I thought that that might help but here I'll show you so um, hold on one sec all right <laughs> so here she is <laughs> and I did also compare the little drawing I was just talking about. So I I took this picture of myself um, and then I traced on top of my phone. So it was like a little light box. So that's, I mean, I think it looks pretty darn accurate. I mean, it's flipped, but you know, you can see my tummy there and my bum cheeks. <laughs> so, you know, that's my, my little tummy area right here, which also I have to always take into account because it adds length there, you know? So yeah, here's, here's the wedgie measurement. <laughs> and then there's the butt cheek measurement. Um, and then this is the top of the waist in the front and the top of the waist in the back. And this right here is directly, um, ooh. There's a word for this and I can't think of it, but basically it's equidistant. It's dividing the waist measurement equally back to front um, from the top of the waist down. So here is where the adjustments come in. This is my reasoning. <laughs> I think it makes sense. Hold on, let me just cut this really fast and it'll be a little bit easier to work with. Hold on. Let me put this down. One second. Okay. So I'm just going to cut this excess off of here. And I've been trying to keep in mind, like, grain and ease. And I, I'm trying, I'm not worrying so much about ease right now just because, I mean, I'm 
I'm trying to build in the ease, but I'm not worried so much just yet about it because I I know I can always add a little bit to the side seams as well. But anyway, so let me just show you what I've been kind of this has been sort of like okay, logically, how do I want to do this? So basically, here's my front, right? So I'm like, okay, where the heck do I even, I don't even know where to start. Like, how do I figure out where to start measuring from, you know? And I realized, oh, okay, I can start with the waist because the waist for the pattern is drafted, you know, even if my waist is in a different spot, it's still, I can use the waist point as like a reference or a, a starting off point. So that's, where the seam is right there. I made sure to take into account the seam allowance. And then that's my actual waist point here. <laughs> and so what I did was, I don't know if you guys know what walking the pattern is, but that's when you basically take two pieces of the pattern. Um, and actually those ones wouldn't be walked because, hold on. So like for the side seams here, you know, these would be sewn together. So you could, um, you would kind of pivot them as you went down and you would just make sure stuff was the same length and all that kind of thing. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope you know what I mean. So basically I decided to walk the pattern on my body shape. So and actually, let me trim this a little bit more so I can show you just a little bit better. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> I uh, changed my mind here. I want to I trim this a little bit more. I can always add some more back on if I need to. Um, so yeah, like I said, I have no idea. Uh, I mean, I'm probably not the first person to ever do it this way, but... Sometimes, you know, I mean, there's so many great tutorials online, but sometimes I'm just stubborn and I just need to kind of do it my own way. Um, and that kind of helps like wrap my brain around, you know, how this stuff works. So Lyric says, I've been wanting to make myself some trousers and shorts. This is helpful to watch someone walk through this. <laughs> um, well, thank you. I, I'm glad it's helpful. Hopefully you will... <laughs> Make me feel the same way as I am going because it's a little mad scientist-y but I think it's actually logically it is actually working out I really did a whole lot before I started <laughs> filming uh because I wanted to make sure I wasn't just like you know like what do I do here what am I gonna do but I, I, okay so this right here is the original seam line I haven't cut anything off of the original pattern and I'm not going to. <laughs> You're living for my hair. Thank you. I'm having a good hair day. Um, yes, yeah, so this is the original seam line here. Oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so it's interesting if I put the waist point right there. And the other thing is, remember I said I had marked exactly where um, the half point was here. So I'm using this as a reference for the grain because the grain will hang perpendicularly, perpendicularly, whatever, <laughs> uh, perpendicular to the floor. And you know, that's how the grain is supposed to work anyway. So, so here's the grain line and I'm gonna use this as a reference, right? So if I put the waist here, this is kind of how the pattern, uh, hold on, I'm gonna use my tape as a weight here. So if I put the pattern, the waist point, right where my waist point is, you can kind of compare. So like, here's my little tummy right here, right? And so it's not drafted for someone with a little tummy there, <laughs> which is fine. Um, you know, it's just a, a, an average essentially. So, so that's like that. And then if we come down, like I said, this is the original seam line here. 
And so this is where my, you know, body is, my pubic bone, and like, there's a lot of space here. And I don't mind a dropped <laughs> crotch for, you know, uh, vintage looks, but I am trying to have it be a little bit less dropped than normal because all of the vintage styles I've sewn have had such a dropped crotch, and I really want a more fitted pair of shorts here. So this is the original seam line. That's my body. There's like a lot of difference here, right? So I decided, okay, I'm going to, basically, I'm going to change the angle here. But before I could change this line, I had to make sure to account for my tummy. So this is where the walking part comes in. So start at, <laughs> it's hard to do with one hand. Um, I should probably get my little hands free thing up here, but it's, the angle's not great, but anyway. All right, so we start at the waist point, and then we use this to pivot until that seam line is hitting my stomach. Like, where does it first hit, you know? So it's like right about, hold on, we anchor down this really quick. Okay. So yeah, so the waist point right there is lined up. And now you want to make sure that it's, I mean, again, this is like my experimentation. I don't know if it's going to work in the, at the end of the day, but logically it's making sense so far. So I'm just going to roll with it. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to use this right here to pivot. If I can do this one handed. There we go. And see, it just skims right there. So now you use this part to pivot. And I'm actually going to hold on one second. I'm trying not to keep moving everything and then having to like fix. Um, see how can I do this? Hold on one sec, sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, sorry about that. So I'm gonna use this to pivot. And as I go, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure the seam line is like hitting my um, silhouette. And right now I'm, I'm going to use the original seam line as like a pivot line. Okay, so I pivoted until the, oops, I went a little too far actually. So I pivoted until, oops, let's pretend like that didn't move, uh, or that. Okay, pretend like that didn't happen. <laughs> so I pivoted until the green line was straight here. See? So that accounts for that length here added from my tummy and the seam line is still oops there again this is you know demonstration i was much more methodical when i did it so that is there and then the grain line is straight <laughs> I feel like i'm doing a um blessing anyway um okay so here's the original seam line right and then I kind of used this as sort of like a, uh, hmm, how do you want to say this? It's like a reference point, I guess. Um, so this point right here, actually, I'm trying to think how I did this originally. Um, I might have kept, I might have kept going until, hold on. So the, the only thing, like I said, is that we don't know, actually, I don't know if I did say this, but we don't know what the fit model's shape was. 
for simplicity. So the variations, we have no idea how much different this person was than me, you know. Um, but we can kind of use we can use the waste point and the grain as a reference. So interestingly, <laughs> if I keep the waste point up here, both of the waste points like together, and then I just act like, okay, my stomach is super flat, which would, would be nice, but it's okay. <laughs> um, and then, you know, keep, keep the grain line straight. Um, the seam point is like almost exactly at the halfway point, but not quite, but almost. So anyway, we pivot here and then until this is perpendicular, the grain is parallel. Oh. Okay, and then this is the length and the shortened line right there. So at this point, I decided, all right, this is like so much, so much difference right here. And I really want to raise this up. I don't want it to be like right up in my business, but I, I want to have a little bit of extra fabric, I think. And again, I'm going to have to make a mock-up and see if I even like how this looks, but we'll find out. <laughs> So I raised the seam line to, to kind of also kind of flow along a little bit better with my body shape um, because I, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen different like crotch curve examples, but they are so <laughs> varied. There's all kinds of shapes. And, you know, some people are more like even and some people are more like, like me tilted and, you know, it's all over the place. So I decided to kind of change the seam line to kind of skim a, a little bit more along my body. So I will be shortening this here because when I, when I did that, it added length, you know, to the inner part of the shorts. So I will be um, cutting this and shifting it upwards I might have to I don't know well, well that's that's regardless that's later on um I'm focusing on the crotch curve right now okay so once I did the front piece now I was like all right how am I gonna how am I gonna do the back piece um so I did a lot of comparing between the back piece um the like the original back piece, my butt cheek shape, and my wedgie shape, if you will. Um, and you know what? Hold on. I'm going to turn on. See, I really want to turn on another light. Hold on one second. Let's see if this one's plugged in. Uh, I don't know if that helped at all, but hopefully helped a little bit. Um, Okay, if it's if it's too dark, let me know. I do have a ring light I can plug in. Actually, I'm gonna just do that. All right, hold on one second. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, let's see where is this thing? Okay, here we go. That'll hopefully be a little bit better. Okay, so. The back piece, again, everything I've read, well, not everything, actually, okay, let me rewind a little bit. Let me talk about this. <laughs> so Ithaca Maven and her pants fitting um, extravaganza. Okay. I was talking about how, just how many people suggest to scoop the crotch, scoop the butt. <laughs> If you're getting a wedgie, or if it's too tight, just like in the crotch, a lot of people will just scoop that curve. And she was saying, you know, don't scoop the curve because the curve has been designed like that very specifically. And rather than adding length 
in that place, you should really be adding length vertically um, because when you scoop, you're adding you're adding more length along that seam line, right? Um, so you know, once you kind of think about that like that, it makes sense to add the length more to like the hip area. So this is the you know original shorts pattern, right? Um, and there's a lot of markings on it that were not on the pattern. <laughs> But uh, so let me show you how I walked this piece because it's about the same, very similar to the front piece, but it is a little bit different. So let me start. Actually, you know what? Take that back. So I was at first walking from the waist point, and then I kept, I wasn't sure like how to account for the grain with the back piece, because as you can see, this is diagonal, right? The front, the front is almost completely vertical, so it's almost in line with the grain. This is not. And when you have a curve like that, where the fabric is, you know, the grain is gonna end up being, um, uh, what, what the heck is the name for it? <sighs> not the cross grain, that's the opposite. It's gonna be on the bias, That that's it. It's gonna be on the bias right here so that it'll stretch. So I, I was having a hard time trying to figure out like, okay, how do I account for the bias that they built into this pair of shorts, right? And I decided, oh, I can, rather than starting from the waist point and pivoting down, I can start from the seam down here, the seam uh, line, I guess, the intersection, intersection of the um, leg, inner leg seam and the crotch curve. And I can put that on my new crotch point uh, for the front piece. And then I can kind of walk the pattern along there. And however short it is, I'm going to add that length to my piece. I think it's gonna work. I hope it is. I hope I'm not like celebrating too early. <laughs> but I really, really think that this technique makes sense. So I really hope it does. But let me show you, let me just show you how it walks with the back piece. All right. So this is the original uh, seam right here, right? This is my new one. And this right here is the original back seam. So if I start from here, I really try to make sure when I start that that's you know in line there, seam lines kind of lined up. And then I start pivoting and you can see where I, I thought about scooping here I was like hmm should I scoop I don't know but this line right here is the original and you know what I am going to get my hands free thing because it's too difficult to try to do this with one hand so hold on one second it's right here I can buckle you in <laughs> all right Someday I'll have a fancy setup. That would be pretty cool. Today's not that day. All right. Um, let's see how I want to do this. What's everybody working on? Anything? Sewing? I hope that's going to be far away enough. Okay. Take my phone out of the case. I really hope that my AirPods are picking up the sound and it's not my phone, because that'll probably be loud. Mm. Actually, how do I want to do this? Uh. Crap, the orientation is... All right, I'll just do it like this. Hold on. 
Bear with me. Okay. All right, I think you can see that all right. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna move this just a little bit. Maybe not that much. Okay, so I'm gonna just, uh, actually no, I need to keep this here, so never mind. All right, and I'm going to put the tape there to anchor it. So, like I said, actually, hold on, let me color in the seam line just a little bit more so you can kind of see better. This is the original seam line for this pattern. I ended up deciding not to scoop it. I might, I don't know, after I try the fitting, I might scoop just a little bit, but I'm going to try to avoid it and see what happens. So. I'm going to start out with the seam point right there. And then I am going to, sorry if the crinkling is loud. I'm going to use my finger as sort of a, like my fingernail is like a pivot point. I'm going to pivot this until it reaches right there. I don't know if you can see that. It's like right down. Gemma, I've been working on pattern adjustments for the same dress for four months, and I'm finally ready to sew the damn thing. I haven't tackled trousers or shorts yet. Oh, man. I feel for you. Fitting is really quite challenging. <laughs> um, especially trousers, I find, because you have to fit, um, you know, the crotch curve really can be tricky. If you have, you know, any sort of variation from the pattern, which most people do. But I'm hoping that this technique is actually going to work out because I might try developing, developing it some more and see if it works with other patterns. And then maybe I'll do like a special, I don't know, video or series or something on it. Um, so we'll see. Maybe you're witnessing the birth of... An amazing new technique. <laughs> uh, let's hope. All right. So again, as I'm, I'm at the pivot point right here, and I'm just gonna kind of keep moving my fingernail, and as the seam line hits my butt cheek uh, uh, boundary, <laughs> I'm just moving it like that. Making sure it stays in line. Okay. That was my foot. <laughs> my foot flop. Um, okay. Again, I'm just continuing to pivot just a little bit here and there as I go. And the other thing is... Okay, it's actually... It's probably shifted because before when I measured it, it was actually about... Mm, three quarters of an inch different. So the other thing is this probably has shifted because I wasn't being super, um, super careful for demo demonstration purposes. But I'll we'll do that one more time. So again, match up our seam right down here. And then just start pivoting so much stuff on this table <laughs> until boop, it hits right there. And pivot some more, move my pivot point, which is my nail, pivot some more. No, I just realized you couldn't see the top of this. Hold on. Okay. Pivot. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna redo the front piece because I really whoa, sorry. I really want you to see how 
the placement affects the length of this piece because that's really the key, I think. So let me just do this one one more time now that I have hands free. Um, okay, so again, match up the same point right there and pivot that until it hits my tummy. And then pivot some more and use my pivot point until I am on grain. On grain or did I go too far? I think that is on grain right there. Okay, so we've got my new line or point right there. Let's just, I'm just gonna mark it in case it moves again, just like lightly. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my back piece and move this one time. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Um, and I start with that lined up there, and then I pivot until that uh, seam line hits my butt cheek, <laughs> my derriere. Sorry for the terminology, I should probably be a little more professional, but whatever. <laughs> Again, just pivot, move the pivot point, and then pivot, 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 do, do, do. And so my, uh, my back here, you're gonna see has sort of the opposite problem as my front. Okay, here we go. That's what I wanted. All right. Now you see, hold on. Let me try to move this a little bit more. Okay. Sorry. Look away. Avert your eyes so you don't get seasick. All right. So you see how this is the same line right here. Don't just forget about that. That's nothing. This is the seam line right here. This is the seam point. And then that is my butt, my lower back right here. So you can see that there's actually that much difference. This is why I always have problems with excess fabric right there. I mean, I knew that that was why, but it's it's cool to see exactly why, you know, um, and exactly where. <laughs> so you can see here, I, I started messing with the darts to uh, account for this extra space right here. I could, um, I could take in the seam a bit, but I think I'm just going to work with that difference here in the darts. So basically at this point you see this is my waist point here. This is the waist point for the pattern and there's a difference here of about uh, three quarters of an inch. I measured it earlier. So that means I need to add three quarters of an inch to this pattern. And I'm going to add that along the lengthen and shorten line right here. So in theory, if I add it there, if I add it there, I won't disturb the crotch curve. It will be the original crotch curve. I did change the front, like I said, just because it was so off, you know, um, I might, I might change, I might change that idea. I might possibly, so I'm not going to do that because I already measured 
using that point as my reference point. I'm gonna I'm gonna just just roll with it. I'm gonna do a mock up. If I hate it, I will kind of go back a little bit. I still think this method is actually really working for me. Um, and like I said, you know, this right here, this is the wedgie line. This is the wedgie line. So as long as the, <laughs> the seam line isn't there, because I want, like I said, I want these to be fitted, you know, and the bias fabric is going to add some stretch. So if I know that, you know, the boundary of my butt cheek is, you know, the seam's going to be at least there. I'll have plenty, in theory, plenty of fabric. I won't have a wedgie. Everyone's going to be happy, <laughs> especially me. So I will cut along here and add three quarters of an inch, and that should do it. Um, okay, let me see. Hello from Ottawa in Bytown. Kathy and accidentally Steve. Hello, Kathy. So, um, does anybody have any questions? Let me, hold on, sorry. There we go. <laughs> Mm, I'm going to put my phone back in the case, otherwise it's going to slip and slide all over the place. Okay. So does anybody have any questions or think I'm a total idiot <laughs> and know why this method is not going to work out? Um, like I said, I, I'm kind of experimenting here. Um, and maybe, maybe this is kind of how you just do it, and I'm like behind the times or something. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I figured this thing out. And everyone else is like, yeah, we already know that's how you do it. <laughs> I just haven't seen it myself. And I I feel like it's it's promising. I have hope that this is going to be a good thing. So worth it when you get there though, Kathy. Yes. I'm the same sleeveless dress for three months, still not here to cutting in the actual fabric. Man. For me, it looks logical to me, but I've never tried it. Yeah, me neither. Like I said, if this ends up working out, I'm going to have to spread the gospel because so many people have problems. I'm so using this method. No, this is so helpful. Yay, good. So I think part of it, too, is not that it matters that much, but like starting with a, a pattern size that's like roughly your size because like I'm using this vintage pattern you know and um it's not quite my size it's just a couple inches off um so that can probably affect a little bit but I mean you're using the waist points like as long as you know the pattern is drafted to hit right at your waist like your your actual waist you can use your waist measurement as like an anchor point. If it's not drafted to sit at the waist, I don't even know, I don't know that this would work. But as long as the natural waist was marked on the pattern, I think it would still work because you could still use that as like a reference point, an anchor point, like a home anchor point. Um, so it could still work. It would just have to be for sure marked. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try, I'm going to try this. I'm going to, I have to shorten the front piece a bit, uh, the leg piece, um, just so that it ends up being the same length as back. I struggle so much because I have this 46 inch waist and 60 inch hips. I usually have to grade up and grade between three to four sizes and then do whole heap of adjustments. I feel for you, Gemma. Um, sometimes I wonder, you know, I, I took a pattern drafting course um, online. It was really good. And sometimes I wonder if it would just actually save time in the long run if you drafted patterns yourself and, like, you could, you know, still buy the pattern you want to use and then 
if you knew how to draft, you could take those same style lines, or I mean, you don't even really have to buy the pattern. <laughs> like once you get good enough at at adjusting, um, like a block, you could just, you know, recreate your own p custom pattern essentially. Um, I know it's a lot of work, but at the end of the day, it's like if you have to adjust from the package so much, it might just be worth it to spend the time and, and draft it yourself. I've definitely considered doing that before. Um, you know, I mean, I, I fall within the range of the size charts, but um, trying to really, like, nail the fit, I think, is difficult for just about anyone because everybody's so different from the fit model. I would say probably 99% of people are different. That's my thinking. I'm trying to learn to draft from scratch. I'm going to try drafting some basic block patterns by draping on my custom dress form. Yeah, um, you did the really pretty bootstrap floral dress form, right? That was awesome. And I've been thinking about making one myself, actually, because <laughs> I have a couple of dress forms. Um, unfortunately, like the nice, like professional one is not my measurements. Yes, that's me. Yay. Um, yeah, the, the waist measurement, I think I'll have to measure it again, but I think my mannequins, my dress form's smallest measurement, I'm smaller than that now. And that means if I wanted to zip it up, I couldn't. <laughs> so I've been thinking about what I can do. Um, and I might try to sew in myself, I think. I do have one of those red Simplicity adjustable ones, but I mean, it, it's, it's, I'm not going to poo-poo it because it was a really good, it was a really good starter one for me, but I, my measurements make it hard to adjust the little knobs, um, because it's so, <laughs> my waist is so much smaller and it, it, it's, when I'm like turning the little keys, it's, feels like it's going to just like spring apart. <laughs> um, and you know, it's just a little flimsy. It doesn't have the same weight as the, the good professional ones. So I might, I might try sewing my own. I feel like I've seen a number of the bootstrap ones that have actually looked amazing. Yours being one of them. Um, Emma, Emma Black, for your name, used to be on Instagram. I think it's Emma Elizabeth now, maybe. Um, she made one that looked awesome. I'm trying to think who else. I know anybody else who made one. But they look, they look pretty cool. So I might try to make one of those myself. I just, just have to figure out like the base part of it. Um, <laughs> she's a bit more bootylicious than me, so I need to remove some stuffing. <laughs> um, I bought an adjustable one and intended to pad it out, but the bootstrap one is so much better. Yeah, you know, the adjustable ones, I mean, there's probably better ones than the one I have, but mine's just like, meh. it's just not ideal. It's okay, you know, I graduated. It was a great first dress form. It really helps my sewing, like up my sewing game. Um, and I'm very grateful to her. <laughs> Scarlet is her name. But, uh, you know, I just, I'm, I'm moving on to greener pastures now. So, yeah, does anybody have any questions or thoughts or whatever, again, about this technique? I know there's some people who have just been joining. Everybody, I'm going to be sharing this live stream um, to my channel so you can go back and watch. I basically showed everyone how I decided to adjust this shorts pattern based on my body shape, and I used an adjustable ruler or a flexible ruler to kind of <laughs> this was really funny I was just in my underwear in the mirror like trying to like you know get it really uh up in there and you know flush with my body as much as possible and uh it's it, the shape was different than I expected because I had taken the picture of my body in the mirror uh, right there. Yeah. Um, 
but I kind of was like guessing. See that little dotted line right there? I did that after I did the um, flexible ruler because I was, you know, you can't see <laughs> how your body, your body shape, unless you use something like this to kind of, uh, you know, shape up in there because you, you just, you just can't see it because of your leg unless you are missing a leg, which I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay. I'm a 38 double F and my mistake was taking a Japanese designer pattern of a large and thinking it would be easy to upsize. Oh gosh. Yeah. Japanese ladies aren't known for their full busts. Let's put it that way. Uh, of course, I am super light. I love those flex rulers for measuring the crotch curve. Love the trick with the flex curve. That's genius. Hi, that's why I learned to sew, because finding ready to wear always needed alterations. Yep, because my waist to hip ratio is large. Yep, I learned to make my own patterns and use sewing patterns as inspiration. Yes, I love that. I love that. It's so... I. I still need to make some blocks for myself. I did buy, um, shoot, what the heck is the name? I'm drawing a blank right now, but there's a, um, UK company. What is it? I'll, I'll think of it and I'll put it, I'll put it in the description, but Basically, you plug in your measurements, and they give you very specific measurements that you have to take, and, you know, the depth of things, and way more than just your waist and your bust um, and your hip, and you plug it all in, and then it generates a block for you, and you can choose different ones, um, you know, uh, dress, you know, princess themes, um, I think they also have, like, a knit blocks. And actually, I know that they were in development of a trouser block, so I don't know if they had finished that or not, but um, the other nice thing about it is that you, you know, if you change measurements, you can, I think, I'm pretty sure that, that they said you can re-plug in your measurements and it'll, like, generate a new one, so if you lose or gain some weight, um, you know, you, you don't have to buy a whole nother one. <laughs> At least I'm, like, 99% sure that's the case. Uh, I'm an inverted triangle, so things that fit my waist are giant on my hips. So I sew so I can multi-size patterns. I have the opposite, <laughs> the opposite problem. Um, I, whenever I would buy clothes, um, especially when I was like graduated from college and like just graduating, um, I had the hardest time trying to find clothes that would fit because my waist is so much smaller than my hips. And so like I would have to buy clothes to fit my hips. And then I didn't know how to alter anything. And I mean, you can alter stuff, but I think I was afraid to like try to alter it and mess it up. <laughs> um, and I didn't have the budget to like pay someone to alter it properly. So I kind of just wore a lot of like stretchy stuff and, and I still, I still wear like any jeans I have, which I have like, I don't even know, three pair of jeans, maybe they're all super stretchy. Um, but I really, 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 really want to sew some vintage style, like high-waisted jeans. I don't have any, and I'm like desperate to get some of those in my wardrobe. I have the opposite problem, too. If they fit my hips, they gave it the waist. I also have really narrow shoulders compared to the rest of me. There's a point that you can only take in so much, too. Right. Exactly. Same. Yeah. You know, it just, it sucks how little, how little um, options there are, I guess, for different shapes. I mean, let alone sizes, different shapes of people out there, and so you end up you know, if you can't sew, then you end up just 
getting something that's flowy kind of or something that's like really stretchy and there's nothing wrong with that but the satisfaction like the confidence that I get when I put on something that fits really well it's just like oh, like you just look so much better when something really fits you and it's not just like fitted only because it's stretchy you know um yeah high-waisted vintage style jeans are my ultimate goal I no longer even own jeans it, it's not even worth it I know gosh I I'm hoping 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 that this pants trouser shorts fitting method is gonna work out I'm gonna make a mock-up and we'll see <laughs> I have hope. Like I said, I did change the short front measurement. Um, And, you know, so here's the other thing. These shorts are vintage, right? So they're drafted to have, you know, the dropped crotch. Um, What I might do is look in my stash of patterns and see what patterns I have that are actually drafted to be more fitted and then um, see if this method would work for one of those. You know, um, that might be, that might be a bit, not better, but that would be a really good reference, I think, too. I just would have to make sure, like I said, that the waist line was marked because you have to have that for the uh, reference point. So I hope everybody found this interesting, at least, or helpful. Um, I will let you know how it goes, of course. I really hope it works out, but I think it's going to. I feel good about this. I I think it makes sense. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, wish me luck, right? Um, And, of course, if if it really does work out, like I said, I will be sure to do a whole detailed tutorial on it and, um, hopefully it can help some other people potentially good luck thank you (laughs) um all right so I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your Sunday if it's Sunday where you're at and uh, I'm gonna go cook some Thai curry Mm, with leftover vegetables my mouth is watering just thinking about it (laughs) all right everybody I will see you next time Uh, actually Tuesday I think I will be well I'm going to try to stream on Tuesday. We'll see. So anyway. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.